Hello everyone and welcome to the Sedona International Film Festival. I'm your host Carol Kahn. We're coming to you live from Yavapai College. Yavapai College is one of our sponsors along with Northern Arizona Healthcare, the Kling Family Foundation, BMO Bank, City of Sedona, and we'd like to thank all of our sponsors, hoteliers, restaurateurs, everyone who has participated in this year's festival, along with all of our volunteers. Thank you so much, and we really appreciate your time here with us. And joining me right now is Elena with your film. I'm going to allow you to introduce that. Hi, Carol. It's good to be here in Sedona. Um, my name is Elena uh, Engel, and uh, our film is John Leguizamo, Live at Rikers. It's a short documentary. and. Um, We've sort of been on the film circuit for a little while here. We started off with a world premiere in Tribeca, and we've just been moving along. But this is, it's really special to be here, and I've been so impressed, I really have, with the film festival. After seeing a few of them, this is, this is really a very unique film festival, and so well done. We're just, we're really proud of it. We're so yeah. proud of this. And in, in speaking to filmmakers like yourself, mm -hmm. every single person that we've talked to that has sat right here on that sofa, that's all they talk about is this film festival. Yeah. And the cool thing is people keep coming back. Like they love it so much. They're like, we're going to make another film <laughs> and come back. Really? You get fed three meals a day. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful theaters to show your films and what's not to like in a gorgeous environment. It's and really good people. Really yeah, very very wonderful people. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank you for, for saying Thank that. Thank you for having it. us. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the film that you brought here to Sedona. Well, John, John Leguizamo Live at Rikers, um, as I said, is, is a documentary. Um, it was shot uh, a number of years ago, actually, in New York City. Um, the inspiration, it was, it was really like a passion project for me. The inspiration was um, basically someone that I love very much in this world who went to prison for a nonviolent offense. And, um, you know, it was the harsh trajectory of his life going forward um, that made me realize, um, you know, the inhumanity and, and the lack of dignity in the American justice system. So you could say this is kind of like, the film is sort of like creative revenge. I've, I've made a number of films and I was an executive producer at Walt Disney and made docudramas, but this is really my first directorial uh, debut making a documentary. And, um, you know, we just, I met, I met John at a uh, anti-recidivist organization. It's uh, in Harlem, New York. Uh, it's a re-entry program for people coming out of prison. Um, they actually follow uh, they follow the offenders into prison from day one, and they follow them all the way through their career as uh, um, uh, justice-involved young people. It's predominantly, it's for justice-involved young men. Uh, and um, he and I were both advocates, and we met and discussed the possibility of making a film in which we could give a more empathetic portrayal of, of, of how human these these people are that are that they that find themselves in the situation, so um, that's how that all began. And um, thought of the idea that what well, John will we'll bring you in and you can do Ghetto Clown, which was his one man uh, autobiographical play that he did um, on Broadway actually, and um, we'll do that. And then you'll I'll have you. It's, it was a simple concept like this. I'll have you talk to a couple of groups of these guys who are willing to talk to you about their hopes, their dreams, um, you know, their regrets, their futures. Um, we'll get them to open up and see what we have here. But I knew that the themes of, of Ghetto Clown, of John's play, that, that much I knew. I knew that, that what he does is accessible storytelling. So. Um, especially for these guys, so the things that he went through, his demons and um, his, his uh, advice, you know, don't hide behind the truth. You know, that's the worst thing you can do. Um, when you tell the truth, especially about yourself, you start to heal. So um, five months later, <laughs> after talking to the DOC and finally getting in New York and finally getting them to allow me to, um, to use the auditorium, which was predominantly used for officers, um, we just, we marched, I marched in there with 25 crew members that I put together pro bono. These were all, all these guys were, uh, and women as well, it was one other woman besides myself, which was an interesting situation there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we, we went in and we shot, we did a rehearsal day and then we shot John performing about 45 minutes worth 
of the material I wanted him to, to do. And then he met with these two girls. So essentially we were there for about three days in Rikers Prison, which was an experience. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it, I'd never been in a prison before, so this was, this was really an experience. And most of the people hadn't either, so, which was part of the intrigue for the crew because not only did they love John, but they also liked the idea of what we were trying to do. Um, Goso, uh, what Goso does is it, when these guys come out and they go to Harlem and they get support in the form of what they call three E's, which are um, employment, education, and emotional support. And I would say that my film probably devotes itself mostly to the emotional aspect of what this is like for these guys. And hopefully, you know, the audience comes away loving them in the way that I love them. And every time I watch this, I have a little tear that comes oh. down my face. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, we do have a trailer, so let's take a look at the trailer and okay. then we'll talk some more. Thank you. Mother's a single parent. She, you know, go to work, work a good job, work for UPS, you know, supervising the drivers or whatever. And she moved out of Brooklyn to Queens. We live in the house and everything. She made it happen. When I got here, my son's a baby. Yeah. Just a few years ago, he wasn't even baby at all. Right. I see him, he walking, talking, running. It just made me feel like, like nothing. Like, like you, missed, you missed out. I missed out on everything. So I got to change. For him, I got to, it's a must. Hmm. Well, you know, I think it's really interesting. Um, I think a good question to you. See something like this because um, I know that in the prison system, for example, mm -hmm. <clears throat> somebody who I was talking to <clears throat> had said that. Um, Many, many times they end up like someone leaves to get out of prison, mm -hmm. but then it's just a short amount of time before they're back in again. <clears throat> and they keep seeing repeat, you know, repeat people coming back and there is like no healing, I guess, in the, in the judicial system. Yes. And so having programs like set up like this, because also if you end up putting um, someone who comes out of prison into an area that there's no way that they can reform in because they're in the same kind of area that got them in there in the first place, right. that there's no reform to that. Right, you're exactly right. I mean, the statistics, um, I'm not super current on the statistics, statistics right now, but um, at the point that we did this film, uh, three quarters of, the, of uh, you know, justice-involved young people who get out basically return within a period of three years. Um, with a program like GOSO, getting out, and there are many, around the country, but this one in particular is very, very successful. It's uh, less than 12% returns, so 80%, 12%, because they're doing the right thing by these guys, and they're supporting them, because, you know, it, it's kind of criminal, in a sense, you know, that if we're gonna treat them like criminals before they go in, and we're gonna treat them the same way when they come out, and they're shunned, and they can't get jobs, and they can't get education, and they can't move beyond their old habits, um, you will end up seeing this over and over again. And in New York at the time, I think it was uh, 60, it was $160,000 a year to keep these guys in prison. A program like OSO is $1,500 a year. So you, you know, you do the statistics right. and you, and beyond the human aspect of it, and you realize that economically, um, we're all screwed up in this country. It's, we really are with the justice system, you know. I don't know if that's going to come back to haunt me, but, but, but it's true. I mean, yeah. we, we're we not doing the right thing by these people. So if we want them to ad, ad, um, adopt a new paradigm, you know, a new way of looking at life, um, we as a, as a society have to educate ourselves about this issue mm -hmm. and we have to support them in some way, we have to figure out a way to do it. It's 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 the human thing to do, you know. It, it just it just makes so much sense, so much more sense than seeing these guys, these guys were uh, in the George Motion Detention Center at Rikers. There are 11 houses. They were there, as you saw, some of them were there for three, four years. 
um, waiting, doing research on, you know, I, I remember walking in the hallway one day and I saw a long line snaking around um, of these young men waiting to get to the computer bank so they could do their own research because they were waiting for their uh, trial date and for their sentencing and that's, they were in a holding center. In addition to, and they've changed this since, there were juveniles who were in the same center as the adults, which, you know, finally yeah. that was changed a number of years ago, but yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, well films like yours hopefully brings a realization um, and also with that change. So thank yeah. you so much for um, bringing that. And I'm a little disappointed. I'm glad you're here, but I was disappointed John's not here. Oh, <laughs> John. <laughs> He's too busy. <laughs> you know, I did hear from him during Christmas. I was having Christmas dinner. I was in Oaxaca, and I get this, hey, what's going on, Lena? <laughs> and so I said, what's going on, John? He said, I'm in Guatemala having Christmas dinner, you know. So he's, no, he's, he was, he's doing, uh, he's got a couple of shows coming up on Amazon and MSNBC, so he's doing publicity for that now. But he loves this film. He yeah. really, really loves this film, and he supports it in every way that he can, so that's been... That's been helpful to to me and yeah yeah well so, thank you thank you so and john much. thank you and you know even though you're not here you're missing out i'm sorry to say and <laughs> you really need to text us yeah, call us something yeah right <laughs> come to sedona you can do it. exactly you can exactly i'm a little disappointed <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> <laughs> well how can people find out about your film well, uh, uh, we've been doing the, the as I said, the, the, the circuit. Um, we're hoping that we can um, get this distributed as soon as possible. Um, and uh, we're trying to do that right now. It's, it's an effort. Short films, it's difficult to, to sell short films mm -hmm. right now. But um, I'm not giving up. I refuse to give up. Um, my whole, <laughs> my, my whole, you know, she perseveres. Um, I'm, I'm going to fight for this and John's going to fight for us and um, hopefully we'll be able to have it online fairly soon. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And Thank then you. as far as the film festival, is it being shown again? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're on our 21st right now since June. No, no. At the film festival. Oh, at the, I'm, sorry, yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Um, y yes. Tomorrow today uh, at 1 p.m. and then tomorrow at the, about the same time, I think 1 or 1 15 okay. p.m. So I hope everybody come. Yes. Come see Come it. out and watch the film. Absolutely. And thank you, Lena. It's so okay. nice to have you, you here. Thank you, Yeah. It's fun. And thank don't you. forget to follow us live on Facebook and also our hashtags are hashtag SIFF23 and hashtag Sedona Film Fest 23. We'll be back with more from the Sedona, <clears throat> excuse me, Film Festival after this. Thank you. That thank was